of manhood and dressed in my full body snoopy footy pajamas <laughs> zipped to my neck. I was one day away from my seventh birthday. But there was no time to waste with such frivolity. Ladies and gentlemen, it was Christmas morning. The year was 1981. The second installment of the Star Wars saga, The Empire Strikes Back, had, had lived and become steeped in my soul since its, its opening a scant year and one half previous, which was approximately a lifetime to this first grader. The time in between was consumed with normal activities like going to school, playing outside, and taking apart plastic Han Solo laser gun with a certain knowledge that a switch could be thrown inside to make it shoot real lasers. Yeah, there. <laughs> there, there was no switch. <laughs> and the toy was rather broken after that. Um, but the preparations for this day had been immense. There's such anticipation for this morning. Multiple Christmas lists to Santa, utilizing backwards letters. Begging, pleading, and this advice from a song that had stayed at the top of the charts for four weeks and then inexplicably went away for about a year. Uh, there was, it was um, watching out and uh, not crying and uh, not pouting. And, and the one, the toughest, man, the toughest one was being good for goodness sake. <laughs> well, I awoke very early on that Christmas morning, as very few children do. And after summoning my scout team, my brother and sister, um, we made our way to the living room. Walking down the hallway, my pulse quickened. My heart raced. I turned the corner, and he had been there. Lined up for miles, because I'm certain that my childhood living room stretched on for miles, were enough action figures and spaceships to make any toy company marketing executive sleep well at night. This was the greatest day of my short life. Well, there was Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi and Eat Your Heart Out Dads, the Millennium, the Millennium Falcon, that's right, and the X-Wing Fighter. <laughs>